welcome back to another collector's discussion. Today will be Hot Toys The Dark Knight Joker, which is an amazing surprise. I had no idea they were going to drop this bombshell onto us. I'm also surprised that Hot Toys didn't pass the prototype to SideshowCon or some event, you know? You would think they would have done something like that with a massive big iconic character as Joker. Maybe they just didn't feel comfortable with it or maybe Hot Toys just wanted to steal the thunder over Sideshow. I have no clue why. But yeah, I'm pretty much going to get into it. Also, I want to draw some comparisons with the in art one. I have the in art Joker, the double pack rooted. I think it's a great figure and I also want to see how this one scales next to it in photography comparisons, of course. And also, I want to see for other people to choose. So, if you guys are watching, you guys make the decision on which one you would rather get. You know, I'm not going to force it on people, you know. But yeah, I'll pretty much end my rambling and get straight into it. So, if you guys do enjoy this, make sure you like and sub. I'll grab the photos up now and we'll get right into it. So, we've got the pictures here and this is the Artisan Edition, which basically is the top of the range one that has the rooted hair. So you've got two choices, you've got this one, and then you've got the regular sculpted hair. Pretty much mimicking the way in art done theirs. And overall, I think it's good competition to have both, you know. I think you've got a lot of options now to choose which one you want. And I, I think they're both very good, you know. I think no one's going to hate you to get this one. No one's going to have hate if you have the Queen Studios or In Art one. I mean, you got choices and I think that's the best possible outcome as a collector we can have. So we got the, obviously the classic pose with the grenades. What is interesting is you got the tongue sticking out, which I believe is a magnet change. It's a swappable part, similar to like the Venom and the Carnage figures. I don't remember them saying on the listing that I read that you get separate head sculpts. It's just one head sculpt, I believe. One rooted head sculpt. So, if you want two head sculpts, the Unart one has two. So, you can draw it down to that. I think the likeness of Heath is there. I feel the hair, the actual rooted hair. If they fix that, I, I don't see a problem with this at all. So we've got a close-up of the head sculpt here. I think the eyes are, are really good. I think the hair colour is good for this scene actually because he has a bit more green in his hair. Mob boss scene. Face paint's on point. The eye makeup I think could be a little bit more panda eyes, a little bit lower. Other than that, I think it's fine. The... Makeup on the small was all good. You got the particular spot that look, almost looks like a pimple, but it's like a weird pus thing. I still don't know how he got these scars on his face. I mean, he kind of has so much bullshit stories. It looks like some burn acid. I don't know. It's weird. The coat is finally updated. So gone is that <laughs> shitty bathrobe that didn't look nice at all. This, this is great in comparison to the TX-11. And I think the only negative I can give this, and it's a negative I can give to every Joker figure in existence, whether it's 1 6, quarter, 1 third, they've all got the same expression, and, and I hate that. Heath was so expressive as Joker, he pulled way more shit in his facial features than just this. Give another sculpt. I mean, the DX-11 had that laughing sculpt, which I still think is perfect. Why Hot Toys didn't give that for this set, I have no idea. Because you're only going to draw these fighting sides of In Art or Hot Toys. You're only going to bring them in droves to fight to see which one of these sculpts is better because they're identical. Hot Toys could have gone out of the water and just done something unique and give us a maniacal laughter head sculpt so it that gets rid of the like fighting people are gonna have now with these two figures so you got separate eyeball rolling systems and two styles of expressions so you don't get two head sculpts you get basically a tongue attachment because they're 
Oh, it's an open mouth expression. Separate eyeball rolling. I actually prefer this than the in art version. I've seen some people have a bit of problems with the singular peg for the in art rolly system. I I slightly have a problem with it. If if you microscopically look at my in art Joker, both of them, they're very very slightly cockeyed. You you can see that it isn't fully aligned up, and that's because it's on one peg. The old Hot Toy figures had that problem too. That's why Hot Toys changed to this. And I prefer this mechanism when it's individually on a eyeball system instead of one. So this is a good photo of the blazer, which is basically under the purple suit. I think this looks better than the in art one. I think it's a better color wave than the in art because in the movie it always comes across a blue gray while the in art one is just really really gray so i think hot toy has actually done a good job with this blazer so you got lining here that looks really good minimizes tugging and wrinkles okay highly accurate right flip collar there so yeah even the proportions look fairly good which the in art one was fairly good too Although, I think maybe here, actual inner shirt, the patterns look a bit dull. Maybe, hopefully it's just a photo. So does the tie, to be honest, as well. Maybe it's just a photo. Maybe they've highlighted the jacket blazer on purpose for you to see. And this is maybe out of focus. Hopefully that's the case. So, wool hair implantation. So, yeah, they've pretty much gone the in art route with the wool hair. I do think the hair needs to be fixed if they do want to rival with in art with their rooted hair. Especially, it's more the hairline to be honest. I think this is too crisp of a hairline for Heath, especially for Joker. He was thinning a fair bit, especially here in the forehead. And I got good photos to show and do comparisons with as well so what's interesting is there's no crotch grabber so it looks like hot toys now are hopped on the train where magnetic bases is the new thing so it's kind of like a brick slab circular base i assume that lights up the bats symbol there a nice fiery red i guess so that looks all right you get a shitload of money, cards there. I hate using these accessories. I never take them out. I just hate messing shit like that. But I know people just go crazy with throwing money and cards all over the place. See, the jacket down here looks nice and weathered. But it should be running all the way up where the buttons are and the lapels and the collar. That's a shame they didn't continue the weathering up here and yeah seeing the hair it's definitely full you know that's definitely something that again needs to be fixed the hair it's just too much volume of the hair and you got the hit me pose on wait what another display base maybe that's detachable no it can't be that's indented That looks indented in the actual base. So you get two rock bases that I assume are magnetic. Because again, no crutch grabber. So this is a hit me pose. Hopefully, Hot Toys have actually put the magnets in good spots or the whole base itself. So you can actually achieve this pose. Something you couldn't do with the in art one. You have to have his legs pretty close together so it doesn't topple over. I assume they're not going to be die-cast weapons, so if you do want the die-cast, it's in art. But overall, I do like it. I think because he's got the open mouth as well, and the grit, it gives like that gritting teeth, it looks more accurate to this scene. So, 
that's a positive with this one. Oh, okay, good. I was going to mention this as well. With the in-art joker, you had no hand that can do this and grab the magazine. And this was actually the pose I wanted to do with my in-art joker, where he's shooting up the cars and intimidating Batman right before the hit me scene. This is my personal favorite like pose from that movie. You can't do it with the in-art one. So it's good that Hot Toys have given the hands that can actually grip onto the magazine like this. So you got another shot here of the grenades. Don't know if they're die cast, have no idea. I, I don't really give a shit to be honest. I haven't I'm not haven't used it on my in-art one, so I couldn't care less. Although I don't remember him licking his lips in this scene. And also for this particular scene, his makeup was a bit more vibrant. This looks a bit more after the interrogation scene when he used the rocket launcher, the RPG. So yeah, maybe Hot Toys need to cake on a bit more makeup to give this accurate look. And especially because his hair is a bit more vibrant green. I assume they're going for the mob boss scene. His makeup needs to be a bit more caked on for that accuracy. So you get a pose here with the hair down. I love the hair down like this too. I'm too chicken to do this with my in art. So if Hot Toys actually like root it purposely to go down like this, I, I actually like the look. Again, everything looks form fitting from the suit. It's again, not puffy like the old school DX11. I've got nothing overall negative. It's not 100% Heath's likeness. To be fair, neither was in art. But I've put side by side photos later on to see which one actually looks more accurate. But overall, I wouldn't be disappointed with this one. So far, it looks pretty good. Although I will say this is an odd pose that doesn't really do the likeness any favor with the eyes up like this, with the tongue sticking out, this, I don't know, this is a weird pose. So this is everything it comes with, so, wool hair, separate rolly eyes with tongue attachment, I assume. You get the gun. Okay. Fine texture and patterns. You get, again, this is what I love with Hot Toys, shitload of accessories. So you get the shotgun. You get the butterfly knife and the potato peelers and all. Oh, you get the pen as well. So again, if you want packed accessories, this is the one to go. You also get the knife in the shoe, which is nice. Diorama base with LED lighting modes. Oh, so it's one base. It's just that's the light turned off because I can see the bat symbol there. So it's one base. You just get light options with the... Okay. You get a fair bit of hand gestures that the in art one doesn't have. So you got, again, you got multiple stuff to choose upon with this one. So this is now the in art head sculpt on the left. Screen grab in the middle and the hot toys on the right here. And the main thing here that I want to point out is the eyes. Not, not the makeup, the eyes. And personally, I think Hot Toys have nailed the eye likeness more than the in-art version. I think that's probably the biggest drawback the in-art one has, sunken in a little bit too much. Not not terrible, but they are sunken in. You can see the Hot Toys one is really good. It's really flush. And you got the screen grab from Heath here. Again, I think Hot Toys have done well with the eyes. The makeup, however, I think it's in art, especially with the panda eyes. You can see how much Heath is just caked on here. And here it is a bit lacking. Next up here is pretty much just the head sculpt in general, mostly the hair as well. And you can see Heath here in the middle. His hair is not perfectly taper cut like the Hot Toys one here. He's got it fairly receding, you know. The colour also is a bit faded here. 
and I think overall the in art one displays that a bit better. Also, you can see like the actual shirt is a bit more vibrant on the in art one. You can see a bit more detailing with like the, the patterns. The tie as well, you can just see here, is fairly accurate to the screen used one. Mind you, this has got some weird lens flare, like this is some Zack Snyder <laughs> shit, but you can get a rough estimate here of the coloring from here and here. While the Hot Toys one is a bit dull, so I was correct, it is a bit bland. Also, you can see the actual weathering on the screen used suit. Hot Toys is pretty much spotless. And the In Art one, this is the Proto. Uh, I wanted to be fair and show the Protos of pretty much both of the figures here, but on the final product from In Art, it is weathered pretty much everywhere you would expect it to be weathered. Next is just pretty much the Hot Toys and the screen grab. This is probably the closest I can give with this head sculpt in particular. And this pose too, I think is pretty much close to this screen grab here. You can see the makeup is a bit more applied, which again varies on the scene, but I assume this sculpt that Hot Toys have taken inspiration is from the mob boss scene. And that's pretty much it for today. If you guys did enjoy this, make sure you like and sub, and I'll see you in the next one.